Willkommen zum aktuellen Gold Invest Exklusiv Interview. Wir sprechen heute mit Simon Lill von The Grey Mining, der unserer nach Ansicht nach sehr aussichtsreiche Gold Explorer hat in den letzten Wochen und Monaten zahlreiche positive News veröffentlicht. Zuletzt noch einmal mehr exzellente Bohrergebnisse. Welcome Simon. Hi Bjorn, how are you going? Thank you. Uh, good day here for an interview. So, uh, if I remember correctly, our last interview was sometime around the beginning of last year, so uh, of, of this year. So, it's a long time since we last talked, too long really to, to recap all that's happened at the Gray since then. Let's just focus on, on the more important uh, corporate and, and project milestones. And I would like to start with your latest resource statement, uh, which came back out in July. Could you summarize what you achieved there for us, please? Okay, our resources, and these are approximate numbers, but they went up from 1.4 million ounces to 1.7 million ounces. There was an increase in grade uh, from 1.6 grams per tonne to 1.8 grams per tonne. And there was a further increase in uh, levels of measured and indicated. We moved up the profile there and measured and indicated too. Top of my head, I think it was 53%, 62%, or thereabouts of our resources are are in measured and indicated. So, uh, yeah, we're quite active in the last 12 months. 1.7 million ounces, we are quite openly stating, we expect to be at 2 million ounces by the end of the year. Two plus million ounces, we're comfortable saying. And that we are targeting three plus million ounces by the end of next year. Uh, we feel as though we're in a pretty good spot there too. So, yes, that's where we're at at the moment with the resources. Okay. Certainly some impressive numbers here and uh, also some uh, great goals to reach. Um, could you tell us then uh, where you are on the way of reaching that in terms of work done, uh, drilling done, what's to come? Can you, can you let us in on that, please? Yes, look, so we have uh, one of our major resources increases have been at Tauranga, which is a granite hosted intrusion. Uh, we've also announced we've got seven analogs at uh, Tauranga. How analogous are they? We will find out. So Tauran has been uh, a significant increase in our resources. We've continued to drill there. We have released results recently that would indicate more of the same. Um, our technical director, Andy Beckwith, has put an exploration target on Tauran of, I think, 680,000 ounces to 800,000 ounces, right. down to 400 metres. At the moment, we're at 350,000 ounces there, remembering it was zero two years ago. So we feel comfortable that we're on the target there. Uh, we've had ongoing good results at Withnal, which is one of our major resources, if not our major resource. And we've had some really good results at Malina uh, in recent times. Malina is now a seven kilometer mineralized uh, shear zone. Uh, area and we're getting really wide alteration zones with good intersections so we had 40 to 50 meters at two to three to four grams intersections that are uh, not close spaced there's some distance to each other uh, that's a positive yes but we've still got to understand where the zones are going as well so Malina is uh, starting to look very very exciting as well um, yeah, so we're pretty comfortable that uh, we'll start, we will achieve the targets that we've uh, suggested. Okay, so uh, that certainly sounds that you have a lot of ways to, to go to, to find these resources, a lot of opportunities there. Um, what kind of news flow can the grey shareholders expect then until the end of this year? In, in what, the new year? Uh, what we've told the market is that we've got three rigs up there operating at the moment. We've got an air core rig, we've got an RC rig, we've got a diamond rig. The air core is very much, we're looking at the uh, perhaps the greenfields opportunity. We've been very uh, much stating that uh, we're a province scale project here. And uh, we've got over 200 kilometres of shear zones, of which less than 10% have been tested laterally. Uh, very few holes below 400 metres or 200 meters other than the resource areas. So the Air Corps is actually trying to test some of these areas that are undercover, the shear zone areas, and uh, looking for uh, new resources, 
The RC is looking to extend resources at known existing resource areas. They all remain open uh, on strike and at depth. And the Diamond is looking at some of the depth extensions. We've been drilling at Tarana recently, but uh, also that Diamond rig's going back to Withnall, uh, and it will probably end up at Molina before too long as well. And uh, having a good look at some of these wide intersections and seeing what's happening underneath those. So there is a lot of news flow coming through in the next uh, two to three months as this uh, backlog of results start to come through. Okay. So that's always good to, to look forward to, especially in, a, in a, an environment of a rising or a strong gold price uh, when you can uh, hopefully uh, present good drill results. Um, but let's go back a bit. As we said, there uh, were a lot of uh, important corporate developments. Uh, another very important corporate event was that De Grey finalized the acquisition of the Indy project and, and raised $22 million um, to do that, among other things. Could you please explain to our audience the, the importance of the Indy project for De Grey and, and talk a bit about the financing? Yeah, look, firstly, the $22 million uh, was to finance and finalize the acquisition, but also to make sure that we had a significant chunk of money to move forward with exploration. We've got a project that needs uh, money spent in the ground to continue to uh, uh, help the market understand what we have here, the scale of what we have here. The $22 million was uh, underwritten by Bell Potter, a very good broker out of Sydney. Um, look, you can look back in hindsight and say, should we have done it here? Should we have done it there? The market doesn't know some of the conversations we've had in the last couple of years, of course, but it's just been great to get the acquisition out of the way. Uh, the Chinese that we have bought it from uh, will be good shareholders and are, are very happy with the way we're moving forward with them as well. It has brought with it in some respects, uh, DGO Gold have reinvested or put some more money in. And we're very fortunate, very fortunate to have three very good directors that have joined the board in the last six to 12 months. Uh, a gentleman by the name of Peter Hood from Perth, very respected uh, uh, director. Ed Eshes from DGO, very well known gold geologist in Australian terms, been responsible for some of Australia's major gold finds. And Bruce Parncut, who's very strong in the Melbourne financial circles. So we've got a very, very good board together. I do need to say that's with due respect to our previous board. It's, uh, it's morphed for, for very many reasons. So we see that as a positive. We've got a good broker supporting us. Uh, we've gone straight back in and started to do a lot of work. Undoubtedly, Bjorn, it's one of the reasons we haven't spoken to you for a while because it's occupied a lot of our time as well. So uh, it's nice to have it done. Um, yes, you would have loved, loved to have done it at a higher price. That's also true. Um, the market uh, in gold stories in Australia, we should also recognise has been difficult in the last 12 months. In a whole host of areas, we are just starting to see with the rising gold price to which you referred, that there's some M&A activity happening uh, today, for example, Breaker Resources, is an Australian company, has made an announcement and said it's had some unsolicited overtures coming toward it. So there is some M&A type activity happening as well. So look, we've done it, we're happy, we own 100% of what we consider to be a major and emerging gold province. Okay. Thank you. Uh, now, as you said, that's out of the way. M&A um, is picking up. What, what do you think, what will it take in your personal opinion for the, the grey stock to get back into the regions it was about, let's say, this time last, last year? I think there was some uh, perhaps aberrations without being unfair. There was the Pilbara gold rush that you would remember about the conglomerate story. We are still a believer in the conglomerates in that the conglomerates are hosting gold. 
there's a little bit of work to be done to see whether how economic that is or isn't. No doubt about that. Look, we have always said we're a structural gold story. The conglomerates are an X factor. We don't even talk about the conglomerates now. We are a structural gold story with a major gold province that is underexplored. 200 kilometers of shear zone, hosted mineralization. We regularly get very, very good intersections. The highlight of our Malina drilling was probably, I think it was roughly 40 meters at roughly four grams a ton at roughly from the surface. Uh, these are not in unusual intersections for us. Uh, we have attracted one of Australia's better known gold geologists in, in Ed Escher's um, so look, we think there is a lot more to be found. There is a lot more by the resources to come through. We are quite comfortable stating 2 million ounces by the end of the year, 3 million ounces by the end of next year. Let's see where we get to, but we, do you know what? We're also being told, Simon, don't undersell yourself 3 million ounces it's three million plus ounces in our belief. That's our target. So okay, certainly uh, you've got a way to go. But as you said, uh, the drill results have um, kept coming in um, from all the different uh, parts of the project, and uh, it's only a small part of the project you've really looked at. So, in your personal opinion, would now uh, be a good uh, time for investors to think about entering a position in the grey main mining and no, beyond it's always difficult to give advice to investors of course and there are many regulations that say that we cannot what i can say is we own 100 percent of the project uh, there are a lot of our peers that don't own 100 percent, or they've got uh, joint ventures etc we regularly get good uh, drill results. We have a lot of drilling for a smallish company. We've got a market cap of roughly uh, $55 million. Uh, we've got a resource inventory that in our opinion will certainly increase. Um, and the market uh, respect, uh, understanding of what we have should improve. So you're going to get lots of news flow. Um, You've got a good broker on board. We're seeing quite good volumes in our stock in the market. You've got rising gold prices, which we touched on, and you've got seemingly increasing M&A activity in the sector. So, yeah, there's a lot of things that are working in our favour now that we've finished the acquisition. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, we're certainly looking forward to all the drill results coming out over the next weeks and month. And, uh, We'll be sure to do an update uh, in, after a shorter while this time and not wait so long for the next up interview. Okay, well, we might get Andy on next time so he can be more technical than I. Okay, great. Thank right. you.